clients in this case wanted a family home. They lived in the neighborhood. They wanted to move to this street, which is one of the nicest streets in the neighborhood because there's no through traffic on it. The house was a very small house before, probably 1,500 square feet, two-story over, undeveloped basement. And it's now about 3,600 square feet plus garage. And it's a three-story, true three-story, where we both raised the house to get more headroom for the garage and lowered the floors to flow out to the rear yard. We raised the house about two feet in order to raise the slope of the driveway and uh, also to lift the house above the sidewalk a little bit in terms of privacy for the front rooms. Here we are at the front of the house. So the facade is essentially restored with new windows, new trim, new shingles, new downspouts and gutters on the building itself. And then in terms of what's in front of the house, in terms of the sidewalk, and the landscaping and the planter and the entry steps and the driveway and the garage, we had liberty to make changes. We saved the house, the front facade of the house. We probably saved the front 20 feet or so of the house because San Francisco enforces CEQA, the California Environmental Quality Act, in a way that no other jurisdiction that we work with does. We went to planning and said, here are the five things we want to do on the front facade. Which of these do you find acceptable that will not trigger an environmental evaluation under CEQA? And they gave us a few, and they told us no on a few others. And uh, we went with that, and so saved about a half a year of approvals time. So here we are in the house. We just entered the front door. We're standing in the main entry hallway, which takes us directly through this floor of the house. And to my left and my right, are the two parlors that were original to this house. And so when we developed space plan, we tried to keep rooms open to one another. So there's a perception that this is one space, but there's the ability to close spaces off to allow them to have their special function. So this can be a sitting room and this can be an office space and they can change and, and, and serve their own function. Yet when you're not using them, you can open them up and make your house feel spacious. One of the challenges was that there's a significant downslope to the lot and as we raise the building up in order to get access to the garage, we're, we also wanted to step down at the rear of the building to be able to flow out to grade and there are limitations as to how high we can put patios in relationship to the existing grades. This house was about a foot and a half, 18 inches lower than it is now. And the visual connection between being in this room and the sidewalk was immediate. When someone walked by, you could just see them. It felt like you were on the same level almost. Even just a foot and a half made a difference. And just by elevating it, it felt like you have a little bit more privacy. When, when an architect's starting on a, on a project, we, we look at circulation right away. You have to know where your stairs are going. You need to know, how am I connecting my floors? Because stairs take space. And stairs, in terms of the layout, the rise, the run, the floor-to-floor -floor heights, are essential. You have to dial it in to know how much space you need and where it's going to go. But for this project, we wanted the stair to be its own room, right? So this is a vertical, this is a vertical room. It's a gallery wall. It's connected visually with an open atrium on three floors. There's a big four foot by four foot skylight over the center of the stair atrium. On the other side of this building wall is our side yard. And what we had to do is use planning code criteria to design something which is permitted in a side yard. And there's only certain things that are permitted in the side yard. One of them is um, a bay window. So if we were to design a small two foot by six foot addition into a side yard space, how can we do that? Well, you look under permitted obstructions and bays are permitted, but you have to glaze them. And so it was a little bit of a loophole, but so we had to put windows in the back of this um, built in hutch and glassware storage cabinetry. And we just let that light come through. Those are fire windows. They're on the property line. 
and then did some decorative glass in the cabinet so it gets sort of backlit in the daylight in the daytime from light reflecting off of the neighbor's house and then it's also artificially lit with lights inside the the cabinetry. The biggest challenges for the contractor are somewhat typical of San Francisco building. It's dealing with adjacent neighbors, it's dealing with um, property line retaining walls, it's uh, dealing with where do you store your materials, where do you take all of the soil that you've taken out of here and how do you get it up to the street. One of the goals, and this is a goal that comes up a lot on all of our projects, is wanting to connect indoor to outdoors. It's it's something almost everyone appreciates. Now in San Francisco, we don't have the warmest climate, but the visual connection goes a long way. So to have doors and windows with glass, obviously windows with glass, but doors with glass, and then the, then the farther views, the visual connection to um, your neighbors and then the neighborhood. If you're not gonna be using the outdoor space, at least you have the visual connection. And that exists on all three floors of this house. The rear of the house is oriented so that it has gorgeous views of downtown San Francisco and the adjacent hills. In some projects, we, we can't make that connection between the outdoor space at a, at a higher level and the yard. But on this one, we could. We had to come five feet off the property line. We still had a little bit of room in terms of where our rear yard line requirement was. And we fit it in. And um, it gets you down there. It gets you down there quickly. Most of the use of this deck is as an extension of this kitchen, but if you want a shortcut from your backyard and all those veggies down there, you come up the spiral stair and right into your kitchen. So here we are at the upper landing, the top floor of the house. This is the bedroom level. The spaces up here are, are two bedrooms for the girls that live in this house and a master bedroom to the east. And off of the upper hall, we have a laundry room and a hall bathroom for the girls. And it's not a big floor, but it does a lot. This is the sleeping level, and this is the um, most intimate level of the house. So here we are in one of the girls' bedrooms. This is the bedroom that has the front bay to the south. So it's a little bit more difficult to do furnishings in here, but the way this room starts to get bigger is this additional space that we were able to do above it. And we did this alternating um, riser tread step system, which allows us to get basically the, the way that one would climb a ship's ladder at a steep angle, but yet safely and with handrails to a higher floor in a much shorter distance. So we go from this floor to the loft floor in only about four and a half feet, which one couldn't do in a normal stair. And building code does not let us use ladders. What I like the most about the project and that uh, our team is proudest of, I think, is the sense of spaciousness in a relatively tight uh, lot in San Francisco where we developed axes through the house. As you enter, you can, there's a straight view out to the views at the back. Um, the dining room is oriented next to the st main stairwell, which goes up and down from that level and has skylights up above that bring light down to the center of the house. That we were able to develop the indoor-outdoor relationships by having adjacent outdoor space at all floors of the house.